Now this video is going to talk about finding the LU factorization of a non-square matrix where you have more rows than columns. So anytime you do LU factorization, the first thing I would recommend doing, especially if you don't have a square matrix, is to the side, go ahead and write out that formula for what the LU factorization stands for. In other words, A equals L times U. Now, do you need to write that out? It you can totally think that in your head too. But why I recommend it is this is going to help you with the size of your matrix L and U. So A here, our original matrix is five rows and three columns. Now, matrix U is always the same size as matrix A because it's the echelon form of matrix A. And L is always square because it's a lower triangular matrix, specifically a unit lower triangular matrix. Well, with multiplication, what do you know? You know that the inner dimensions have to match with your two matrices you're multiplying together. So that means the number of columns of L has to be 5. You also know that the product L times U has to give that back the matrix A. So that means the number of rows in L is 5. And notice that does we get 5 by 5 is the size for matrix L or a square matrix. And now we're ready to go ahead and find L and U. Well, U is our echelon form of matrix A. So you just start from matrix A. L, however, you start from the size that you know matrix L has to be. So in this example, we know that matrix L has to be 5 by 5. So we know it's lower triangular and unit lower triangular. So every entry on the diagonal has to be 1, and every entry above the diagonal has to be 0. So we know for sure that our matrix in terms of its format is going to look like this. One's on the diagonal, zero's above the diagonal. We don't know what entries are below the diagonal yet, but that's what we'll figure out as we go through our process of converting matrix A into its echelon form. So now we go back to matrix A. We find the first pivot, which in our case is going to be that number 2. And then we want to zero out all of the numbers below 2. You always take the pivot row or the row that your pivot is in and use it to get rid of those numbers below it. So here on row 2, we'll add twice row 1 to row 2. Row 3, we'll subtract 3 times row 1 to get row 3. Row 4, we'll add 3 times row 1 to get the new row 4. And for row 5, we will subtract 4 times row 1 to get the new row 5. And then we just have to do those row operations. First row doesn't change. Second row, when we multiply 2 by that top row and, and add, we'll get 0, 2, 1. Third row, we'll end up getting 0, 4, 2. Fourth row, we'll end up getting all zeros. And the last row will be 0, 6, 3. Now at this stage, you can either continue the process and row reduce the new matrix that we have with the next pivot. The next pivot will be here at 2. Or you can go ahead and track what we just did over in our matrix L. Now, remember what you do? You grab all of these numbers that you multiplied or scaled row 1 by and put them in the first column of the matrix L. In other words, under that very first pivot right here in matrix L. But remember, you flip the signs. So instead of 2, negative 3, positive 3, negative 4, you'll have negative 2, positive 3, negative 3, and positive 4. Now, the other way that you can think about this, and it doesn't matter which of these two methods you use, the other way you think about it is take all the actual numbers in the matrix below the pivot, that negative 4, that 6, that negative 6, that positive 8, and divide them by whoever the pivot is. In this case, our pivot was 2, so we would divide each of these numbers by 2. The negative 4 over 2 would give you the negative 2, 6 over 2, positive 3, negative 6 over 2, negative 3, and 8 over 2, the positive 4. Notice you get the same answers regardless. Okay. Now, at this point, we're done with the first step. We move on to the next iteration of our matrix. Notice it's not currently in echelon form, so we do have to do something in, 
in order to get to the next iteration or the next conversion of our matrix. So here on row three, we're going to do what? We're going to use the row with a pivot in it, so row two, to get rid of the four. So we'll multiply row two times two and subtract. For row four, there's no change whatsoever. So you either write down nothing or you can do this sneaky trick, which says you'll multiply by zero. Row five, we'll multiply row two by three and subtract. And that'll give us the new row five. And I forgot to highlight, so let me go back in and highlight these numbers we're trying to zero out. Notice they're the one zero. So it didn't have to change. So top two rows won't change. We'll still have the 2, negative 3, 4, then the 0, 2, 1. The next row will change. The 0, 4, 2 will turn into all three zeros. The next row already was three zeros, and the last row will also turn into all three zeros. And notice at this point it's in echelon form, which means we've found u. Now all we have to do is track what we just did over in our matrix L, which isn't yet complete. Okay. So what we just did was work on the second pivot. The second pivot is the second column in matrix L. So we're going to take the numbers that we used to multiply our row 2 by and subtract it from row 3 through 5, and those will be the numbers that we put into or fill into this second column. Now remember I said subtract the multiple or the scalar multiple of row 2, so you'll flip all of these signs. So negative 2 here would really be positive 2, well, 0 stays 0, and the negative 3 here would really be positive 3. Or, if you did it the other method, we originally had 4, 0, 6 before a below our pivot, and you divide each of those by the actual pivot value, and notice that's where you get, once you simplify, 2, 0, 3, the same numbers we just plugged in. At this stage, notice we were done. We don't have a third pivot. We don't have a fourth pivot. We don't have a fifth pivot. We only have these two pivots in our echelon form, which means for our last three columns of matrix L, you don't have any information that you're pulling from you. In other words, there's no adjustments that we're tracking, which means since there's no third or fourth pivot in your matrix A, or if you prefer in your matrix U, you're going to fill in all of these missing locations, fill in with zeros. Why? Because there was no change. At this point, you now have your matrix L. You already had your matrix U, which was a specific form of your echelon a specific echelon form of this matrix. So at this point, that's it in terms of the LU factorization.